Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video, you will learn how to use Git inside of VS Code. This video is suited for someone who knows what Git is, but is not really comfortable in the terminal and would like to use the Git integration inside of VS Code. We'll start from scratch. I've got a blank VS Code window and now I will drag one of my empty folders into it to create a project or working directory. To make it a Git repository, we would need to first check whether we have a Git installed. Okay, so try it Git version on your computer and if something gets outputted, then you have Git installed. If not, then you would need to go to the Git website and download Git for your operating system. Now you have to set your name and email in the git config. The command is git config hyphen hyphen global and then user.name to set your name and user.email to set your email. If you've already configured git in the past, then you probably don't have to do this step, but I'm just stating it here for the people that are starting really from scratch. To check whether you have your name and email already set up in the git config, simply type in hyphen hyphen list. You should be able to see the email and name in the config and to quit the view, type in colon and Q and hit enter. To initialize the Git repository, we can go to the Git tab, click on initialize repository. I'll delete the default commit message or we could go to the terminal and type in git init. Okay, so both of them do the same thing. And if you go to the terminal and type in git init and a folder name, then this would create a subfolder with a new git repository. Okay, so if I bring this inside of my finder, you'll see that it creates a new folder, my project. So you can either create repository in the root or in the subfolder. I will delete my project. I won't need it for this tutorial. And then I'll open the git start folder again. By default, when you initialize git repository, it creates a first branch, calls it a master. And that's what you find on most projects. So you can see it in the terminal. You can see it in the bottom left corner of VS Code. And that's how you also are able to switch between branches. So clicking on the master, I would be able to create a new branch or switch to another branch. Before we start interacting with branches, let's create a file and make our first commit. Now let's review some of the UI that we have available when we want to make a commit. Okay, so let's go back to the file you see the U over here that marks the file as untracked. Next to it, we have the stage changes. Then we have the discard changes and open file. Okay. So if I click on the plus, we just staged our files and the A means the file has been added. If I click on the minus, we did unstage our changes. Okay. So that's what the plus minus does. The icon on the left from it opens the file. So if I close it, this would open it for me. On the left, we have the Git, the commit button, refresh, and again, all the other options. Okay, so let's do the commit all. Go back to the message, type in our first commit, and hit the tick. This will create the first commit. You can ignore my message over here. You probably don't have the same. And that's how you create your first commit. Okay, to check whether it's really committed, we can type in git log. That would give us the text output in the terminal. Or we could go to the timeline, the new VS Code timeline, and we'll see the first commit over here. Okay, so that's how you check the commit timeline inside of VS Code. Now we can make second set of changes. Again, stage them. This time we will use the commit amend okay so this will take our changes and amend it to the previous commit instead of creating a new one we have the option to change the commit message 
And when we hit enter and go back to the timeline, we see the commit again with the changed message and both changes saved. That's how you use the commit all amend and the sign off is the same as git all, but it adds little signature at the end of the commit message. To see all the other options in action, pushing and pulling, we firstly need to make sure we push this to a remote repository. Okay, At the moment, this is only local, so no one else would be able to check this out and work on this project with us. And for that, we will need to go to GitHub and create a new blank repository. We will call it Git VS Code Demo and I'll leave everything empty, we'll make it public and hit create, okay? That will create the repo, give us few options how to add code to it. And if we look carefully, you see that we've already done some of these steps. We only need to add the origin, add this URL as the origin of our repo and then push our master to the origin, okay? So we only need to do these two steps it's the same as in push existing repository from command line. Okay, so these are the two steps we need to do. So let's copy firstly the first line, paste it in VS Code. This will add the remote to our repo and save it as an origin. We needed to do that as a first step. And the second one is we need to push our master branch and push it to this origin URL, okay? So we also need to do the second step and let's paste it in. Now we pushed the local master into the origin and we should be up and running and be in sync of what the master on remote has and what we have locally, okay? Now they are both connected as you can see, the icon over here also changed. And that is a good sign that our changes are published and they are available for someone else to pull. And also if someone else pushes changes to the remote, we'll be able to pull them down. Now, if we go back to GitHub and refresh the page, we'll see that we have one branch with one commit. So that's the code we had originally only on our local. Now it's published. And uh, let's go to the readme file and edit it locally. So edit it on the server and then we'll be able to push the changes or pull the changes back to our local. Okay, so I'm gonna add another line. Save the file. Now the file on the server is modified but our changes are currently not here. We need to pull them, okay? So that's where the pull command becomes handy. If we click on it, we should be pulling the changes from the server and updating them in our local repo, okay? So now we are, we are now in sync. We're pushing changes to remote. We're pulling them to our local. And that's how you work with Git inside of VS Code. We've covered a workflow where you starting from scratch, firstly on your local and then pushing it to remote. But what if you get handed this Git repository URL and you just want to clone it and run it inside of VS Code, okay? So that's what we will look at. Next, I've got a plain window of VS Code, no folder opened, and I've got an option to open a folder or clone a repository, okay? So we will we'll do the clone repository, or I can press F1 and search for git clone in the menu. These will do the same. And if I hit enter, I will be asked for the repository URL. I will need to go back to GitHub or Bitbucket, whatever you use. Find the clone URL, come back to VS Code, paste it in. Then VS Code will ask you for a folder on your local where you want to store this. Okay, I will navigate to my desktop and YouTube demos 2020 and hit select. As you can see, I'm doing it in the root folder of YouTube demos. 
because it will create the Git VS Code demo folder for me. Okay, so if I would create manually a folder here, it would check out the Git repository inside of that folder. Okay, so just be mindful of that, that it will create a folder for you and it will match the name of the repo. After it's done, you will be asked whether to open it or open in your window. I will click on open. And now we have the same code as before, but this time we did clone the repo instead of starting from scratch. Now let's have a look how we can create new branches in VS Code. We can go to the left bottom label of master, click on it, and we get the create new branch option from the drop down menu. When we click on it, we can enter the name of the new branch and that will create our new local branch. Now let's make a simple commit. I'm hitting command and enter to speed up the committing. And then we will click on this cloud icon. This will publish our local branch to the remote. Once it's done and we go back to GitHub, we will see the branch being published and someone else can check it out and work on it with us. Okay, so that's how you publish your local branches to the remote. And that's it all for today. Hope you've enjoyed this Git tutorial inside of VS Code. And what we've done, we've learned how to clone a repo, how to initialize it manually, how to push it to the remote URL, and how to simply commit and how to generally work with Git inside of VS Code. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And if you think there is something I've missed in this tutorial, let me know in the comments and I'll make video about it next time. Until then, happy coding. Bye.